Media literacy. Just as the teaching of technological skills has evolved, so too should the teaching of media literacy. It cannot rest in one specific curricular area. Although English language arts is a natural fit, as other literacies are already present in the established curriculum, it cannot be the only domain of media literacy. In many ways, I continue to see myself as an English teacher, so the connections for me are clear. My limited exposure to other subject area precludes me from assuming how other subject areas approach this topic, but I know there are strong connections to all the other curricular areas. Media literacy means students have the skills and knowledge required to communicate effectively by accessing, evaluating, and creating meaningful media. Access to media requires some of the same technical skills teachers have been teaching for years. Before you can move to more thoughtful advancements, it's important the basics are covered. In this case, the basics involve relatively simple technical skills. Students need to know how to access the media on the computer, on the DVD, in the magazine. Before they can evaluate and produce, they need basic access. For example, before students arrive in kindergarten, they usually understand what a book is, how to hold it, how to turn the page. Even understanding that a picture of a giraffe represents a real giraffe is a form of literacy that predates the student's time in kindergarten. In the same way, students need to know how to turn on a DVD player, how to use a mouse. They need to know that the computer can be used to communicate to others across time and space. Even without knowing the complex skills associated with these tasks, students need to have an initial basic understanding of what the technology is and how it can function. Because students come to us with most of these aforementioned skills, the teacher's work sometimes starts with the evaluation of the media. The teacher needs to expose students to different media with a specific focus on different quality of media. There are many factors that can be considered when evaluating media forms, image, text, content, format, authorship, authenticity. Depending on the context in the classroom, the grade, the subject, there can be strong connections made to the current curriculum. I believe teachers may need to make an effort to make these connections in their class, either as part of the established lessons or as teachable moments as the media is used in class. Media creation doesn't necessarily follow evaluation as it's possible to produce media without fully understanding, analyzing, and evaluating the media sources. In fact, many students are in the practice of creating media without being fully literate in the format they're using. To me, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think there are many advantages to novice users creating their first website or their first video. Authentic learning comes from these first critical steps. The creative process, in conjunction with a critical evaluative eye, will help students to better understand other forms of media, and if they can be critical of their own creation, it will be easier for them to be critical of other forms. I disagree with the author's assertion that witnessing an event live, firsthand, would be the best way for students to learn. There are many technologies available that would permit an enhanced and augmented lesson, not possible in real time or space. I'll take the author's example of a metamorphosis in a butterfly. There are a number of video excerpts and interactive websites that offer students a deeper, richer understanding of the process. Even watching a time-lapsed YouTube video of a butterfly going through metamorphosis can provide students with an other perspective not available in real time or space. Granted, the live event would provide students with a different perspective on the process, but I'd be hesitant to say that it's inherently better because it's live. Part of media literacy is to understand and recognize when the media forms are inherently better than other events. Permitting equitable access to more students via the use of technology makes this specific situation better for me. Media literacy can be clearly connected to digital citizenship, a current term that's favored in the Calgary Board of Education. To me, there are two definitions of digital citizenship currently being used. In some instances, it relates to the use of school resources, including how students access the infrastructure. Do they access the school's wireless network on their iPods? Can they send personal emails from their school email accounts? Which websites are appropriate if the student is using his or her own laptop, but accessing through the school's wireless network? 
The other definition of digital citizenship is a little broader and includes these considerations along with a stronger understanding of what it means to be responsible and active in a digital environment. What are the legal, the social, economic factors? How can you be a responsible digital citizenship? What is the prevailing etiquette outside of the legal impositions? How do students remain safe and healthy in a digital environment? My current role has me in a digital environment, working as a teacher and administrator in an online high school. Our students, more than any others in our school board, are impacted by any digital citizen plans or strategies implemented. However, they have the most to gain from a stronger understanding of what it means to be a responsible digital citizen. I believe this needs to relate to the second definition, outside of the technical and board-imposed legalities. A student needs to know which network to access from her iPod, but there are many more significant characteristics that need to be explored through the curriculum and informally with the teacher and other students. This is a new field and a new concept that we're all trying to wrap our heads around. There's a two-day conference in Calgary this fall that's specifically focused on digital citizenship and what that means for educators at all levels. The conference is highlighted for social studies teachers, but I believe it's a mistake to only advertise to one specific subject area. Just as media literacy belongs to all subject areas, so too should digital citizenship be in the domain of all subjects.